Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the Pow Kitty A12. This tabletop arcade sells for less than $90. A big thank you to Cafago for shipping this unit for review. You can play all kinds of games, console games, arcade games. Although the game list is all in Chinese. But never fear, Wagner's Tech Talk is here. <laughs> we're going to fix that. I've got a script that you'll be able to run that'll convert your game list into something that'll work on the Pal Kitty A12, and I'm going to show you how to do it in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at the specifications of the Pow Kitty A12. It's got a 9-inch LCD display at 1024 by 600 pixels. The CPU is a quad-core ARM Cortex-A7 at 1.3 GHz. It's got 512 megs of DDR3 RAM. It also includes a 32GB TF card with 2400 plus games, which are mostly in Chinese, but as I mentioned, I'm going to show you how to fix that. It also has a 4000 mAh lithium battery an HDMI output port, which actually works, two USB ports, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a 3 watt speaker, which puts out some pretty nice bass, and of course, arcade joysticks and buttons. Alright, so let's go ahead and unbox the Pow Kitty A12. It was very well packed, as you can see here. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Cool, can't wait to try this thing out. Here we have a package that includes a manual, which is okay. <laughs> and USB-C to USB-A for charging. And the unit itself. The buttons feel good, the joysticks feel good, obviously very clicky. But uh, hey, after all, it's an arcade tabletop, so that's to be expected. Over here on the left, you have the HDMI output, two USB ports for external controllers, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a micro SD card, and your power input, USB-C, and your power button. I'm going to go ahead and plug it up to recharge the battery. And I really want to show you this speaker. It's really impressive. The way it's designed, the sound is very deep and loud. I loaded up a video. This is the last video that I created on the channel. We're going to take a look at an operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4 that's built on PiOS, but gives it the look and feel of various other operating systems. What you see here is just a very small sampling of what we're going to cover. The operating system is called Phoenix OS, with an F. In my opinion, the sound quality is pretty impressive. All right, let's go to the file menu, and here you can browse for files that are on your micro SD card. Pretty cool. Let's go into settings and here we have our language options. We'll go ahead and select it and apparently I've been spelling English wrong all of these years. It's English. <laughs> anyway, uh, display. We've got equal proportion or full screen. Equal proportion will maintain the original aspect ratio. Under theme you've got three different themes so you can select a lighter theme, a darker theme, or this one. I like theme two, so we'll stick with that. As far as backlighting, you've got four levels. You can go dark or a little bit brighter, and we'll go leave it at four. Under timeout, this is when the screen goes off. I'm going to go ahead and set it for never. And at the bottom, you have options for connection, clear and restore. And uh, yeah, we don't want to restore anything, so we're good. I also tried one external game controller, and that worked as well. I was able to navigate menus and play some games. So now I'm going to hook up the HDMI output, and we'll check out Donkey Kong Country. And this is a game I added to the unit. The main video you see here is coming directly off of my HDMI capture card. And here I'm going to go ahead and save the game state. So I'm going to move down to the slot here. And yeah, I'll just leave it at zero. That's fine. And oh, let's go down and select save state. 
Now it's saving it. And notice it was using RetroArt. I'm going to go ahead and move forward a little bit. And I'm going to reload the save state. So I'll go back to load state. And there we have it. It did put me right back where I was. That's cool. Alright, let's do a little bit of gameplay here. Alright, so let's take a look at the options for the Mega Drive here. And this is what I wanted to show you. Everything is in Chinese, which <laughs> if you speak Chinese, that's great. But unfortunately, I do not. And we have to fix this. Before we dig into the details, I want to show you where to go for more information. Go to wagnerstechtalk.com. Go down to Tutorials, Retro Game Handhelds, and Pal Kitty A12 Tips. From there, you'll find a ton of information that has been written that'll step you through all of the steps that I'm about to show you here in this video. Things that you're going to need, prerequisites. Uh, we will be using Python, so here's some links and information to help you with the install. And this download link will be active by the time you see this video. So yeah, there's lots of information here. Steps you through getting the artwork, example output that's generated, video conversion, and more. Now we're going to start up Win32 Disk Imager. We're going to select the image name, and this is the name of the original micro SD card from your PowKitty A12. So go ahead and type in a name and click Open. And we're going to read the contents of that micro SD card to a file on our hard drive. Once this is done, I highly recommend you use a new micro SD card so your original remains intact. In this case, I'm going to use a 128 gig Samsung micro SD card. Now we just select our file, our backup image, click open. And we're going to do the opposite here. Instead of reading, we're going to write it to the new card. When you see this prompt, just click yes. Of course, make sure that you've got the correct drive selected. And once it's done, you'll have an exact copy of the original micro SD. A couple of videos back, I showed you how to build this modern retro console, which is powered by a Raspberry Pi 4. Well, we're going to use that, in this case, to take the games and scrape the artwork for those games and use it on our PalKitty A12. Alright, so we're going to start off with our games. This is what we are going to generate box art for, so I'm going to go ahead and select all the files. Right-click, go to Copy, and then we're going to move over to our RetroPie subfolder here, and then go to ROMs, and then we'll go to our Game Boy Color, and paste those games into that directory. Awesome! Now we'll go ahead and launch RetroPie. So I'm going to go ahead and double click the icon and we'll go into Emulation Station and from here I'm going to hit Start on the controller, go to the Scraper and I'm going to move down to where it says Scrape Now and select the Systems. I'm going to go ahead and select None and then we're only going to get Game Boy Color artwork, so I'm going to select that, go back. I'm going to turn off User Decides on Conflicts and hit Start. Now I'm going to fast forward as it's going out to the internet and finding all the box art for all the games that we're going to use. Now we'll go back, go down to Quit, Quit Emulation Station, and now I'll show you where to go to collect your images. Go to OPT, then RetroPie, Go to Configs, and then All, Emulation Station, and Downloaded Images, and GBC for Game Boy Color. We'll go ahead and select all the files, right-click and copy, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a folder on my NAS here called Images, and paste the files there. Or you could use a USB stick if you prefer. After you download the archive from my website, create a folder, doesn't matter what you call it, and copy those two files in there. And then you want to open the gengameslist.txt 
.py file or .py file into an editor. You can use Notepad or whatever you want. In this case, I'm using Idle. More information of that on the tips page. So I'm going to change the game path in the image file path to GBC, and I'm going to save it. And let's take a quick look at the folder structure under Images, GBC. There's my box art. If I go up and go to GBC, these are my games. There you can see it a little better. Also, if you set this parameter, the Create Default Image Files, to false, it won't generate the artwork if you don't want it to. And there's some other parameters here that you can modify. All right, so now we're going to run it. And once it runs, it gives you a summary. It says it uh, created this game strings en.xml, and it found nine games and generated two pages of games. Very cool. If we look at the XML file, I'm going to right click and open it in an editor. We can see here, this is what the file looks like that was generated. Now keep in mind when this runs, if there are some special characters that don't play too well on the A12, it'll go ahead and rename them. So that's something to keep in mind. They won't match 100% with what your source was. And it'll also copy these files to subdirectories for game images and another for converted game names. So anyway, they all match up and we are ready to copy them over to our PalKitty a12 micro SD. So let's go ahead and do that. On the left is the micro SD. I'm going to right click and copy the game strings en.xml and we're going to go to the settings directory under res or resources, I assume is what that means. And then we'll go down to GBC and string subdirectory and we'll go ahead and delete this Chinese version. We don't need that anymore. So I'm going to right click it and select delete and yes. And then we're going to paste our new one in. Great. All right, so now we're going to move up to the pick directory. So we'll double click there. And all of these are the images or box art that's in Chinese. So we're going to select all of those. Control A and delete, yes. And now we're going to copy our own box art over, so we're going to go to Game Images and Control A again to select all and Control C to copy. And we'll paste them into the pick directory. Now there's only one thing left. We got to copy our games over, so we'll go to the root of the micro SD card and go to the game subdirectory. Double click in there, go to GBC Game Boy Color. Apparently there's our GBC Game Boy Color image files, which uh, mine are actually zip files, but it doesn't matter. Either one will work fine. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And then we shall copy our new image files or game files. Control A, copy, and paste. And at this point it's ready to play. But I'm going to show you on the Raspberry Pi you can do the same thing. So here I'm going to a dot game subfolder and in this case I am not creating the image files. I just wanted to test it out and make sure it worked. So now I'm going to run it run module or F5 and here we see that it did create the XML file and I'm gonna load it up just to demonstrate that and now after removing our micro SD and putting it on the PalKitty A12 you can see we have an English game list as well as box art that matches the games that we want to play so yeah I'm, I'm very excited about this I love the device uh, it's wonderful and now that I can understand what games I'm launching, it's a ton better. <laughs> and as you can see here, you can launch the games just fine. Uh, although I don't play very well, so I'm going to skip that part because I'm not very familiar with this game. But uh, I hope you found this video helpful. And there is one other thing I want to show you. 
If it can't find the box art for whatever reason, then in that case, you'll see this message right here. I should also note that the program that you saw earlier, as well as the website and this video, was created within four days. And during that time, I had to teach myself Python, so if you're a Python developer, please go easy on me. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope that the program is useful for you in allowing you to create your own custom game list on your Pow Kitty A12. This has been a grueling four days, <laughs> I've got to be honest. So if you would, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I shall talk to you very soon.